All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, today, what I want to talk about is RTA based strategy of choosing your core monsters versus your counter monsters, your counter picks. So, your core monsters should be monsters you feel comfortable picking every match, no matter what. They'll be your first pick or two. They are your bread and butter. They should be your best rune monsters on your account, even if it feels weird to do that. Like, if they're your core picks, rune them the best because you're going to play them the most. So, you want to rely on their runes, rely on their rune efficiency every match. So, for me, my core monsters are Fran. Here are the stats. Um, now, Hathor, because I just pulled Hathor. Those stats are not quite correct. She's going to get reruned in a in a week. So those are her current runes. Um, Gany, now, due to the Hathor. Again, going to be reruned. And then Josephine is another one of my core monsters. Um, and it's based on how I rune them and how I value them and how I pick them. Those are monsters I pick quite often, first two picks, regardless of what the other team is doing. Uh, some people might have Okeanos as one of their core monsters. Mine is not currently. Um, it may be in the future. It may not. Some people might have Ciara as their core monster. Mine is not currently. So really know what your core monsters are and use them every match. The next thing is counter pick monsters, right? So these are monsters that, you know, after your core, maybe after your like tier two, which is kind of your outside your core. So non non core monsters for me might be Perna, Okeanos. Some people might have Tessarian, I don't. Some people might have Molong, I don't. Some people run Bastet, mine's not. I'd say my Aegir is my kind of tier two monster, my slightly outside my core. I use him a lot, but he's not used every match regardless of matchup. He's slightly matchup dependent. Vanessa is kind of a core, kind of outside my core. I would like to pick her more, but now that I've got the Hathor, she doesn't happen as often. And then Triana is another sort of tier two outside my core. Strictly counterpick monsters are monsters that only get picked into certain comps because I feel like the value they bring against my opponent outweighs bringing more core or tier two monsters. So uh, outside my core monsters would be Garo. And these are pretty well rune monsters, but they are like your tier three monsters for RTA. Tessa, and this is just rune terribly. I rarely bring Tessa. It's just a disaster, but it's, it's double attack. Um, but for a lot of people, that is a, a counter pick only monster. Leo, there are the runes. So Leo is certain used in certain situations. Um, Mainly cleave to kind of slow him down. Um, Helena is a definitely a situational pick. The problem with Helena is it's not Diana. She can't and like look at those runes. She can't go to every match. There's if there's too much water, she can't go. If there's too much immunity, she can't go. So she's a fringe pick. But when she is allowed to go, she goes nuts. She does so many things. So she's a she's a fringe counter pick monster. Azaria is another one, and I could rune her a little bit better, but she's good enough for now. Um, you know, used for the speed lead when I need it. She works well with Hathor, but definitely a counterpick type monster. And then for a lot of people, Jemire. Mine is not currently ruined for that. It's ruined for Cat 5, so Jemire's not going to work. But my Windroid is definitely a situational pick monster. I'm not convinced it brings enough to the table um, yet, but it is it is one of those situational picks, so a counterpick. So looking at some recent matches, let's go to... Let's do best. Let's look at some best. So a lot of the best, the problem with people that are, you'll find on the best list, the really OP people, is they have nothing but core monsters, right, to choose from. Their pool is core monsters. And their pool, their core monsters are core, their core, their counter, they do everything. Like Eladriel does not have a situ situation where she's not useful. Or, yeah, that's her name, right? This white one, I can't remember his name. Artamiel, Artamiel. Gosh, if I kept it with Eladriel, you guys would murder me. Artamiel, right, always useful. Interesting to see a Molong first pick, but that's clearly a core monster for him. Countered with two monsters that are just really, really, really good. Very top of the game um, with the two nat fives for the other player. And then he goes with the Bulwark Amelia. And then he tries to slow him down with the Leo. But then he brings the Vanessa. That's kind of a weird pick. Um, and then the Fen Yang. So I don't know. So looking at some of my battles, you can see I went counter pick early with the Antares. Usually counter picks come in pick four and five. But to counter Gany Hathor, um, I felt like you know, let's get it in there early. It's interesting he picked one of the units I want to fight with Antares by picking the Verd. So that was kind of weird. And then you can see his counter picks to my Antares at the end by Water Monkey Aegir. He's looking at removing immunity because I, I went uh, double immunity. He brings double stripper plus the Hathor's triple stripper. Um, but you can tell from those double water picks that he's going to leave the Antares in, which means the Antares is going to get to go against the three units it is meant to counter. So that's that's a pretty good that's pretty good luck for me. Looking at this one, I open with Fran. That's one of my core. He goes um, Verd Hathor. So I go Gany Josie. Uh, again, my core. Um, what's nice about those is the Gany is a free ban for me of the Gany Hathor for him. 
and it gives me some utility with my Fran. It gives me double immunity with my Fran if if allowed to stay in the game. The Josephine is great because it's part of my core and it will help counter the Hathor. Um, ideally, I'll taunt the bird and he won't crit when he's taunted. So that's another semi-bird counter. Um, then he goes Aegir Diana. And so I'm like, okay, Diana, my Diana counter is Antares. So I bring Antares again. Um, and then I go Perna as well. I found Perna to be nice against non-nuke control teams um, because they're almost always wind. Like, it'll take him a long time to burn two lives of a Perna with a Hathor Diana, and he'll heal whatever is targeted. So let's say he wants to murder Josephine. You know, if I have passive heals even while asleep, that makes it that much more difficult. So I do like the Perna as a Hathor um, Diana counter. And then he goes with the dark speed lead broken whatever thing. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't want to deal with that. I, I do know I banned that. It's got speed lead. It does horrible things. So no, that's not going to happen. Um... And look at these matches. We won both of those. So that's kind of nice. Here's another one. Um, we opened with my standard core. He went Hathor whatever. So I took away the Gany Hathor option. Which is not as prevalent as you would think. A lot of people just go single Hathor. But why risk it? You know, Gany is good enough on his own. He does a lot. So why why risk having to decide on Gany Hathor? At least now I can decide on a single Hathor. And I've got a Josephine in there. I've got Josephine Immunity. Which already feels good against the Hathor. Um, and then he goes with his counter pick. He goes with a double immunity quite kind of at the end with the Vela Jewel. He's looking at that Gany and that Ciara and doesn't like what he sees. So you can kind of see the, the flow of people. Here's one that I lost to a G3. Um, this is just an example of my runes were bad. You can I'll, I'll show you this match. Um, but I opened with my core. <clears throat> Excuse me. I went with Gany Hathor here just to kind of try it out. I finished with Wusa Oki, which may have not been the best picks. And then he goes... Um, I finished with Josephine Oki. He finished with Wusa. And I don't know. I'm not sure if that's the best pick. Let's let's look at this match here. This was a match that early on, I thought I was going to win. And then as it went on, I could feel my runes inadequacy in action. So let's see if you guys get the same, the same sense. Already I'm behind 33% on a G3, which is not what you want. So he goes one, two, three. He goes all four monsters due to the vert. But already going two monsters in front of me and then syncing up his team is bad. Bombs the Gany, we get the Josephine. Nice little taunt there. Don't get the stun, but, you know, can't get them all. Miss the stun again. But we get a full Oki stun, which is pretty nice. And we're still packing Hathor. So in an ideal world, I would let that stun wear off before I Hathor, because I'm only getting one turn of value. Um, but, you know, you got to take what you can get. You're worried that one proc will mess you up, especially if it's a Verd proc. So we're burning down this Vanessa, which is cooldown, which is probably a slightly inefficient use of the cooldown. But I don't want to cool down the Aegir because then he gets heals and speed, right? So we put him all to sleep. We miss the Verd. And then here's, I think, my play that might be a poor choice. I break my own sleep into Oki's third skill, completely negating the, the Gany Hathor combo. I'm doing his job for him, right? But I'm, you know, I'm probably misplaying and playing a G3. And I'm thinking, surely this will work. I don't need that Verd to take a turn. So I'm still feeling pretty good here. My Gany's low, and I have no heals, but, I mean, we're getting work done. Doesn't quite get the kill. Put the Aegir to sleep, which maybe the Verd is the better choice, because the amount of bar gained from the Aegir asleep versus the Verd was a lot. So now we're 3 on 3. Working on this, uh, this Verd. Get the stun, that feels pretty good. Miss the sleep, that is not as good. And again, was that the correct sleep target? I don't know. I mean, in light of what horrible things are happening to me, no, it was not. Um, but he did have the bomb. So it's little things like that that'll determine the match. And in the moment, they're hard to evaluate. Um, but watching back is kind of where you can where you can learn. So I don't know. Would I have done the same thing? Hard to say. Get to sleep that time. And of course, now we're, we're really behind the eight ball. We needed to have killed that bird with the Josephine up. Um, and we didn't. Now we're down to... 1-3 and match is over. I, there was a moment in there, I think it hinged on the Oki Hathor back-to-back -back turns, where I blew the Hathor sleep to just to stun Verd, and that could have gone even worse. I got a quad stun out of it, but that could have woke up two monsters versus one. So I think that was my that was my big misplay there. Anyway, um, hope that was helpful. Kind of a discussion of core versus tier two versus uh, counter pick monsters. That's kind of how I think about my monsters when I'm rooting my account. The less I'm going to pick you the further down the list of priority you are for getting runes. So anyway, I uh, hope that's helpful and I will catch you on the next video. Take care, everybody.